What's up guys? It's your girl Nicole Dot Young and I'm back with another video. So first I just want to say to everyone who's been following along on this boot camp journey, thank you and thank you for being patient because I know over the last few weeks I've pretty much ghosted this channel and my social media, but it was really because in this last phase and senior phase of boot camp, I have been building a ton and there has really been no time to split my focus on other things like creating the content that I've been really enjoying making about my journey. I have still been vlogging and things like that, just don't have time to edit videos and things like that. The only reason why I'm uploading this one is because it's going to count for an assignment that I have to turn in tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that's just the reality of it. But even though this is for an assignment, I thought it would be a great way to also answer a question that a lot of people have asked me as I started to share this journey. And that is, what projects do you build when you are in boot camp? What, what does that look like? And, you know, should I expect to also build projects if I'm going to pursue a boot camp? So I'm going to share the three big projects that I built over the last five weeks or so of this last phase of boot camp. I'm going to overview what they are, the technologies that I used, and just overall what that process looked like and, and how it was and my general feelings about it. So without further ado, Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first application that I want to show you guys is Grace Sipper, um, a play on words because the project name is Grace Shopper. We got to decide whatever we wanted to sell and my team decided that we wanted to sell cocktails. So here is an overview of what it looks like. And as you can see, we got real punny with the names. Everything is uh, code themed names, but they look really classy and look really good. So this is your basic average CRUD e-commerce site. We have the basic CRUD application um, operations, excuse me. So create, read, update, and delete. So um, if you don't know what CRUD is, definitely look into that because that's like the basic operations that you would need for your average application. So a user can come log in. We have authentication. I'm going to sign in as Cody. Um, he is one of our admins, but um, I'm going to just show you for now what you can do. So I can uh, first filter by price, type of alcohol, or even in ascending or descending order in terms of price. So let's do that. Um, and so it just took out anything that was less than $10. Let's do uh, less than $10 and you can see a change. Super cool. So that's super fun. Um, a user can click on an item, add it to their cart, go to their cart and now they have those things there. I can change the number, update, I can uh, delete do the same thing basic stuff right we also have the other uh, types of things in the application like um, they can see the users that are there um, but you can also look at the products and this is like the admin dashboard for updating and adding new products so you can add a new cocktail add the image URL and all of those fun things here um, the price, all of that, but I can also edit or uh, delete any project, any um, <laughs> cocktail that is in our inventory. inventory. So I'm going to delete that one. You can see that it instantly changes. So the stack that we used for this application was React, Redux, Express, PostgreSQL database. We uh, deployed to Heroku and yeah, I'm pretty sure that was that was about it. We also used uh, 
just basic bootstrap to style it, which is something that I really had a lot of fun with, um, being able to learn a, a really highly used uh, design and styling library. Um, so yeah, this is a really easy, I would say, thing to add uh, to your portfolio to build really quickly. Um, styling wasn't that hard um, and the, the CRUD application stuff wasn't that hard either. Um, I think the hardest part about this particular project was working on a team. Um, and it's not because my team wasn't amazing. Reed, SJ, and Gabriel were awesome, but it's just really interesting to learn the other side of what it takes to be a developer. Things like being organized, working in a specific role, uh, prioritization, um, deciding what features to add and which ones not to add. Things like that um, are really uh, decisions that you will have to make as a developer and they are ones that aren't always the easiest when you are collaborating with other people um, and we had to really decide what our workflow and team norms and all of those things were and that wasn't easy getting started and it was all of our first time working on a team on any kind of project not just a full stack application like this. I think the hardest thing about working on a team was just getting used to Git operations. So Git and GitHub, you know, making new branches, making pull requests, merging changes, all of that. That process, we hit a lot of bumps in the road along the way of working through that. And it wasn't always the most fun, but it was definitely a huge learning experience and one that was super helpful because now I'm understanding like the fuller potential of Git and GitHub and why it's so important where before it just kind of seemed like a really a complicated way to just save multiple versions of your work. Now I get why it's so necessary, especially when you have multiple people working on the same project. next project was a solo project and it was one where we had complete control over what it was that we did what we learned we were just kind of thrown to our own devices and creating a project on our own um, they did suggest that we worked on something using new technologies that we hadn't learned in class so i decided i wanted to make a google chrome extension and my idea with the google chrome extension was just for it to be a tool that I used uh, to make sharing and uh, searching through my own personal uh, YouTube channel of the you know the videos that I have and things like that making it a little easier than it is currently on YouTube um, so here is uh, one version that I started using like more complex uh, styling library and using both React and Redux. It's not working, but that's okay. I had a more simpler version of it. So all this is, it's making a request to YouTube's data API to fetch all of the videos on my channel. That's pretty much it. Uh, these are all of the videos, as you can see, like this is the title. I can copy by, by clicking this, it literally copies the link to my YouTube video and will take me right to that video. And um, it will also, the okay, also lets me get the thumbnail of a, video that I am like working on. This is really helpful for me because number one, being able to share and distribute my videos like on other social media channels. I don't have to go searching for that video, clicking on it and copying the URL from the search bar. I can just now just search it right here. And also getting the thumbnails when I'm editing um, and adding the pictures of videos that I'm referencing like 
this or this, it is a lot easier to just be able to uh, access it directly like this than having to go into YouTube's creator studio and clicking through my videos and finding that video and downloading all of that. It's just a little bit simpler this way. My original goal for this Google Chrome extension was to really take full advantage of YouTube's data API and not just getting the links and thumbnails of videos, but also getting the links of playlists, being able to edit and update playlists right from the Google Chrome extension, and also to be able to access and uh, reply to most recent comments. Those are all things that you can do with YouTube's data API. So if you are someone that wants to work with YouTube's uh, APIs, um, I definitely think that that one is a really good one to start with. I think that the API was pretty straightforward. The documentation is pretty thorough. So if you have time to look through it um, when you're looking to work with it, I think it's great. But yeah, this is definitely a project I'm going to build off of because it's not just beneficial for me, but it's something that if I can get it to work and get authentication built into it, I think it's something that I could even launch um, as an actual Google Chrome extension. So this one's a portfolio piece I'm really excited about. So a little background information on this project. This is my capstone project. We worked on this project for three whole weeks. I worked on a team, Keon, Nick, and Morgan. Um, three awesome guys that I got to work with and we just, we took that whole entire three weeks uh, and we, we picked a really ambitious idea. So the gist of it is our target audience are artists, musicians, creators, things like that, who uh, will come on to our website, create a 3D experience where they can change the color or the text, the sound even, um, add images and you know change the shape of this 3D object and then be able to save that to their account and then open up our app side of our application and be able to render that 3D model in their space wherever you know they are where it will play the music that they attach to it, all of that. Um, and this is a simpler version of the uh, original idea where we wanted to like people to be able to place things in real space using geolocation and things like that. Uh, we came across a lot of hiccups because of the tools that we were using um, and I will list those here. A lot of the things that we were using were deprecated, um, meaning that you know the developers who created them weren't working on them anymore or there were a lot of issues or conflicts with other tools that hadn't been solved yet um, and the documentation in some cases were, was pretty much non-existent. So that made it really difficult to be able to use a lot of like react natives different imports and things like that installs um but still ended up you know finding ways around the issues that we found and that's why i am so proud of this product and really excited to continue to work on it with Morgan, Nick, and Keon because I think that this is just such an awesome idea and it was so fun to work on. Um, and it was my first time working on a project that it was super intimidating and super uh, ambitious, but with every twist and turn and with every you know deep dive into documentation and things like that, I gained more confidence in myself as a developer and my ability to tackle any challenge that 
I faced, you know, even if it was dealing with tons of new technologies and languages and things like that. Okay, so this is the project. Um, I'm already logged in, so let me go to the projects that I have. Okay, so you can create a new project or you can view all of the projects that you have. And let me just show you what it looks like to create a project. So first of all, super cool, this 3JS um, preview. So I can say like, I want text or I want a shape only, or I want both. Let's just do a shape for now, and I'm gonna change a uh, new project, and I'm gonna change it to a cube, so now you can see that. And then like I can change this shape and scale of it. Um, I can change the color, or I can add a material. Material is like when you wanna add like actual art, like a PDF file, um, or a PNG or JPEG file to it. For now, I'll just do color. Um, just so you can get an idea of what it looks like. I'm gonna change the color here and you can see it previews on my box. I can add the URL to an MP3. Um, would you want it to have animation? Yes, I will say I want it to jump. Um, and then would you like to add an image marker? So there's a method to rendering these objects by displaying a picture. So if you want a movie poster to be the anchor that triggers the rendering of that 3D object, you can do that. And in this situation, like I could uh, say yes and then upload an image, but for now you get the point. So I'm gonna submit that. And then here are all of the, the information for that new project, okay? So once uh, that project is uploaded and rendered, then a person can go to our mobile side. They would log in using the same credentials that they have, go to their pro profile, and then all of their projects would be saved there and be able to click on them to render them. So I'm going to show you guys on the screen what those look like. So basically they get three methods of how they would like to render that 3D object. So they can render it using auto, which is where as soon as they click it, it opens and it renders that 3D object is exactly where they are. That's super quick and easy um, way to place it. There's also a plane selector. As you can see in the example, there's like a little gray box that shows up on the surface that the camera is pointed towards and you can select that surface to be the point of reference that the object is rendered from. And then you can use the image anchor. In this example, the image is actually a picture of what you are looking at in the living room. Um, and it renders off to the side so that you can see um, the model there. But that is a really cool ex um, example of how it can be used as an artist if you want like a piece of art on a canvas or a movie poster or you know a band poster or cd cover or album cover something like that to be the point of reference used to render some type of 3d object that would be super cool to do and as you can also hear they each play sound that we added so that's the basic overview and the the stack that we've used but Otherwise, this is a project that we are going to uh, continue to work on. We want to add spatial sound, so not just the sound playing, but also it changing in its volume based on your uh, positioning near or away from the model that's there. Geolocation, we want to be able to render uh, models in a persistent geolocation um, in at a specific coordinate so that anyone with the app could go to that specific location and see that model rendered there um, and hear the sound and all of that we also want to make our app side a little more social so being able to interact with those models um, adding likes and comments and things like that to it um, and also just being able to share those things on other social media platforms so we have a lot of work 
uh, to do a lot of room to grow, but it's something that I'm really excited to continue to work on as I graduate um, and as we move on uh, with our job searches and different things that are coming up. So that is pretty much it for me, guys. Um, I hope you guys liked this deep dive into my projects. If you would like me to you know, go deeper into any particular project or if you have questions about it, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And as always, guys, I love you, I'm rooting for you, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.